Hey, what's up everybody? Eternal Fire here, and today we're going to be talking about the Mist Weaver Monk in Patch 725. In this video, we're going to be talking about the stat priorities, talents, legendaries, tier 20. In this video, we're also going to talk about the spell rotations. With that said, let's get right into it. Starting off with stat priorities, crit, versatility, mastery, and haste is going to give you the most bang for your buck with rating and your most mana sustain. However, with Mythic Plus, you're going to want to go with a build more like haste, mastery, crit, versatility. You're going to go with high haste because you can blow through your mana because in Mythic Plus, you can easily in between pulls sit down and drink. So it's better to be able to blow through your mana and use your big heals constantly and just spam them. Whereas in a raid, you're going to want to conserve your mana a little bit more. So crit and versatility are going to pull ahead there. Whereas again, in Mythic Plus, Haste Mastery is better, unless you're doing, say, a really high level uh, Tyrannical. Looking at the legendaries for the Mistweaver, the best healing legendaries you can get, in my opinion, is Velen's Future Sight, which on use increases all healing done by 15% and causes 50% of overhealing on players to be redistributed to up to three nearby injured allies for 10 seconds. And it's on a relatively short cooldown. So that's a really good on use trinket to use. And then you also have Aethys, Lunar Glides of Aramis. Uplifting Trance increases your Vivify healing by up by an additional 10% and causes it to heal one additional target. So your Vivify hits one additional target and when Uplifting Trance procs, it heals for 10% more. So instead of just the 40%, it's now 50% more healing. So that's just a really regular uh, proc you're going to get throughout a raid fight and it's just very powerful especially since it adds one additional person for the aoe healing aspect in my opinion if you can get these two legendaries which i have neither of they're going to be the best legendaries to use ovids is not a bad healing legendary either and then pride as is really good for survivability so if you're doing a hard progression fight where you're taking a lot of damage it's something you could consider using Tier 20 for the Mistweaver, Essence Font has a 40% chance to grant Surge of Mist, reducing the cost of your next Enveloping Mist by 75%. So in my opinion, the two set here is very mana efficient. So you're going to be using Essence Font regularly, and we'll get to that later. But basically, you're using Essence Font, and you're also using Enveloping Mist quite regularly. So the fact that you have a 40% chance to proc Enveloping Mist, it just helps you save mana throughout the duration of a long boss fight. So maybe not the most powerful uh, healing increase there, but it definitely helps you reserve mana. And then looking at the four set, when you consume Surge of Mists, your healing done is increased by 12% for 10 seconds. So when you use your Essence font and you proc Surge of Mists, then you use Enveloping Mist while it's procced. At that time, you now have a 12% healing increase for 10 seconds. And we're going to talk about how powerful that is later on. Now looking at the talents, in your first tier you have Chi Burst, Zen Pulse, and Chi Wave. Chi Wave is very weak right now compared to the other two. If you're doing solely like melee content, you're doing a Mythic Plus with only melee DPS, or you're doing a fight like Harjaten, you could consider Zen Pulse being as that it needs to be uh, within a very close proximity. Chi Burst is going to be your go-to in 95% of situations. Uh, what it does is it shoots forward this Chi Burst of energy, it damages enemies, and it heals enemies for a very decent heal uh, for no mana cost. So that's going to be your go-to uh, heal for your first tier here. That's going to be your default. In the next tier, it's totally up to you what you want to use. It's just mobility increase, how you like to use it. I prefer Chi Torpedo. And then the next uh, section, we have Life Cycles, Spirit of the Crane, and Mist Wrap. So Life Cycles helps you conserve mana. So Enveloping Mist reduces the mana cost of your next Vivify by 20% and vice versa. So if you're having trouble uh, getting through a boss fight with enough mana, consider using life cycles. However, you can also use Spirit of the Crane, which if you are getting low on mana, you can simply go in, do a little bit of DPS, and we'll talk about how to DPS later, and you'll get some mana back. So that's a very nice talent to use. You get a decent amount of mana back quickly. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Mist Wrap increases enveloping mist duration by one second, and it's healing bonus by 10%. You may now channel Soothing Mist while moving. So I, I really like using this talent very often. If I'm doing something where there's a long, very long boss fight and I'm going to be doing a lot of healing, I find Spirit of the Crane is going to be better because while Mist Trap is nice because it increases the healing of Enveloping Mist and I can use Soothing Mist while moving, Spirit of the Crane is going to help me get those big heals out toward the end of a boss fight when I would otherwise be out of mana. In the next tier, we have uh, Leg Sweep. That's going to be your go-to default here, having that nice AoE uh, 
stun is very nice. Ring of Peace is something you could definitely consider using in niche situations, like let's say Dark Art Thicket in the first few pulls with those cats uh, on like a high keystone where they're going to one-shot somebody when they charge. You could throw down a Ring of Peace and then it would just knock them out of it. Other than that, just go for Leg Sweep. In the next tier, you have Healing Elixir, Diffuse Magic, and Dampen Harm. Healing Elixir is going to be your go-to. It just gives you two charges of a personal heal. Diffuse Magic, if you're going to be doing a boss fight where there's a particular magic ability that does a lot of damage and you need to help mitigate it. And Dampen Harm, the same thing, but for physical damage if you need to mitigate a big hit. Otherwise, go with Healing Elixir. In general, you're going to get more use out of that. Dropping down, we have Invoke Chiji, the Red Crane. This is a really nice healing cooldown. It's on a three minute cooldown and it basically just makes your crane on crack go sprinting around like a crazy person. Then you have Summon's, uh, Summon Jade Serpent, Summon Jade Serpent Statue. And it basically just buffs your Soothing Mist, which is not something that's gonna be more powerful than your Chiji right here, who is uh, just going crazy. Yeah, he just bounces around and does healing for quite a while, though, for 45 seconds. So it's really nice to have. And then Refreshing Jade Wind, again, a fight like Harja, and this is going to be a nice talent to use. Um, you can just basically use it on cooldown, and it's going to do AoE healing to people within melee range of you. Um, they did increase the, the range by a little bit, actually, 10 yards and 725. So like Harja and where everybody's going to be stacked up, you might you know, find this definitely pulls ahead. So consider using that. Otherwise, in most situations, you're just going to go with invo Invoke Chiji and like, in you know, just to get that extra healing out when people are taking a lot of damage, if you need a little bit of help there. In the last tier, we have Manatee, Focus Thunder, and Rising Thunder. Manatee is going to be your go-to here. Reduces the mana cost of your spells by 50% for 10 seconds. So that's really nice. If you know you're going to be bursting a lot, you can pop your Manatee and then use some really expensive spells with a minimal cost. So it's going to help you reserve mana. Thunder Focus. Thunder Focus T now empowers your next two spells. I also really like this talent as well because you can basically do things like uh, use your Thunder Focus T and get, you know, two free Vivifies off back to back or two renews up. So it's just something, depending on your play style, really, uh, you can benefit from that a lot. And then Rising Thunder, Rising Sun Kick resets the remaining cooldown on Thunder Focus T. So if you're fist weaving, and we'll talk about that later, um, this is definitely something you could consider. You're going to be in the melee pack doing DPS and then taking advantage of your Thunder Focus T, uh, Rising Thunder can be really effective because you're just going to be resetting the cooldown on that quite often. So that is a talent build you can use. There's a lot of different talents that are viable depending on your playstyle or the fight you're doing. In this guide, we're actually going to go over the spell book as I find that there's a lot of spells that are not really well understood for the Mistweaver. So starting with Blackout Kick, we're going to talk about DPS a little bit right now. So you have Blackout Kick for DPS, you have Tiger Palm, if I could find it, Tiger Palm, and you also have Rising Sun Kick. So they're all three right up here. So Tiger Palm, you're going to see this. We're also going to look at a passive. Teachings of the Monastery. Tiger Palm causes your next Blackout Kick to strike an additional time stacking up to three. Blackout Kick has a 15% chance to reset the remaining cooldown on Rising Sun Kick. So when you look at a Fist Weaver build, okay, you're using Spirit of the Crane and Rising Thunder. What you're going to be doing is looking for Rising Sun Kick to reset your mana fo your Thunder Focus T. And then Blackout Kick is going to be resetting Rising Sun Kick. And Tiger Palm is giving you more stacks of Blackout Kick to reset Rising Sun Kick. So basically, what that looks like is this. You're going to use your Rising Sun Kick. That's your hardest hitting ability. And then you're going to use Tiger Palm until you have three stacks of Teaching of the Monastery. When you have three stacks, at that time you're gonna Blackout Kick. And so you do a bunch of hits of it, giving you a chance to reset Rising Sun Kick, which resets your Thunder Focus T. So let's say we use our Thunder Focus T, we use it on a Vivify, and we Rising Sun Kick. We have our Thunder, Thunder Focus back up. Now we're gonna Tiger Palm. You do that three times, and then we just reset Rising Sun Kick. 
So it's kind of interesting in the way that DPS works, as in you prioritize for DPS Rising Sun Kick to reset Thunder Focus T, and if you're not going with a Fist Weaving build, Rising Sun Kick is just your number one DPSing ability. And then you're going to use Tiger Palm to get three stacks of Teaching of the Monastery, and once you do that, you're going to use Blackout Strike to try and reset this cooldown on Rising Sun Kick. Believe it or not, you can actually do quite a bit of damage. Let's see if we can get out of combat here. And then I'll show you what the DPS actually looks like. So we're going to use that. Three stacks of this. Now we're going to wait for that to come back off because it was just such a short cooldown. And then we've reset that. So we just crit for over a million with Rising Thunder Kick. And as you can see, we're doing very decent damage as a healing monk right now. And then we're going to let that reset again. And as you can see, it's a very effective way to DPS. We're doing over 400k DPS. And at that time, the thing to practice with the Fist Weaver is you're using your Thunder Focus T healing and then using your Rising, Rising Sun Kick to reset Thunder Focus T again, healing again. And you basically, again, Fist Weave. You are using your DPS abilities weaving that in with your healing abilities. So it's just kind of something that you can play with. I would play with it in like low dungeons to start with, or maybe like LFR or something like that, um, until you get the use of it. But it's a very fun play style. I wouldn't use it in like serious content necessarily, unless it was the very beginning of a fight and no one was taking damage. But in general, I'm not gonna be taking Rising Thunder. But for the sake of this video, that's how you fist weave. Uh, it's, it's pretty fun in my opinion. One last thing worth mentioning for the Mistweaver Monk for AoE DPS is Spinning Crane Kick. So you can use it every 1.3 seconds, so don't use it on the global cooldown. Wait for your character to stop spinning and you can use it more fluidly. So it does a ton of damage, you can see the meters right there. So we're going to wait for the graphic to stop and we're just going to keep doing it. And as you can see it does quite a bit of damage. So it's a lot of fun to use in situations where you just need to help out with AoE. So go ahead and use that for fun. Just make sure that your targets, your, your, your teammates not dying at the same time. But yeah, that's your AoE DPS right there for the Mistweaver. Now that we've talked about DPS for the Mistweaver, we're going to talk about the healing. So a fuse is your, just kind of your weak, cheap, uh, single target heal. Enveloping Mist is your powerful heal over time. So you use Enveloping Mist, it's going to trigger Soothing Mist which is just a constant uh, heal that you can do. And then, so Enveloping Mist is your powerful heal over time. Renewing Mist is not as powerful as Enveloping Mist, but you wanna keep Renewing Mist up 100% of the time. You wanna keep it up as much as you can during a boss fight. You wanna use it whenever it's off cooldown. Doesn't matter what target you use it on, if it's the tank, if it's a random DPS taking damage, whatever, just refresh it. Uh, because surrounds a target with healing mist restoring X amount of health over 24 seconds. If renewing mist heals a target past maximum health, it will travel to another injured ally within 20 yards. So basically, if you throw this on a DPS uh, that's you know taking a small amount of damage, you heal them up, they're now at max health, it's not going to just sit on them overhealing them. It's going to bounce to somebody else who's taking damage. So renewing mist is always looking to benefit somebody who's hurt in a raid or a, or a dungeon. Um, so this is really important to always have up. On top of that, each time Renewing Mist heals, it has a 4% chance to increase the healing of your next Vivify by 40%. Now this is one of your silent procs. So when you use Renewing Mist, it has a 4% chance to proc something called Uplifting Trance. Uplifting Trance makes Vivify heal for 40% more. Okay, and going back to that Legendary we were talking about, Where's it at? Where's it at? Home. Loot. There we go. Uplifting Trance increases your Vivify healing by an additional 10% and causes it to heal one additional target. So this can proc Uplifting Trance, and when it does, it makes your Vivify heal 40% uh, stronger, unless you have that Legendary, then 50% stronger and one additional target. So it's very, very important to keep healing, Renewing Mist up. And then your Enveloping Mist is going to be a more expensive hot, but it's also stronger. So you're going to be using that on the tank. You want to use it on the tank, you want to keep it on the tank. So if I'm going to really try to just power bomb heal the tank, uh, like say on Kill Jaden during Felclaw, I'm going to use Renew on the tank and immediately Enveloping Mist. Okay, and when I do that, then I'm going to start Soothing Mist, so I'm going to get my Renewing Mist hot, my Enveloping Mist hot, 
and then I'm going to be soothing mist the tank at the same time. So that's three very powerful hots that you're going to be using on the tank to help keep them up. So that's a great way to use those in combination for single target. Otherwise, you can just use renewing mist on anybody taking damage and enveloping mist on anybody like the tank taking damage. Prioritize the tank with that. And then for somebody who's taking a specific amount of damage for a reason in a boss fight, you can use enveloping mist for them as well to help keep them up or pick them up. Another thing to talk about is Thunder Focus T. So Thunder Focus T is on a 30 second cooldown. You receive, receive a jolt of energy empowering your next spell cast. A fuse healing increased is by 200%, which is really good because um, a fuse is pretty weak by itself. So this really helps power it up. In general, for like a raid or any sort of AOE damage, you're not really gonna use a fuse. But for single target healing, like in a dungeon, you can certainly use a fuse to conserve mana. Enveloping Mist becomes an instant cast, so if you need to like power heal somebody, again, you can use your Renewing Mist, Thunder Focus T, and um, your Enveloping Mist, and that helps you really powerfully heal somebody extremely fast. Essence Font channels 100% faster, so Essence Font channels that fast, so it just channels twice as fast when you use your Thunder Focus T first. Renewing Mist does not trigger a cooldown, so you can basically use it twice, and then Vivify costs no mana, so that's a really good way to use Vivify in a mana efficient way. So Thunder Focus T is just something that you're going to want to get in the habit of using regularly as it buffs your main healing spells and it's only it's up every 30 seconds so you can use it pretty regularly and you should get in the habit of not missing it when it comes off cooldown. There's no real benefit to holding on to it, just use it on cooldown as it either helps you save mana or makes your heals more powerful. So moving on, Fortifying Brew turns your skin to a stone, increasing your current and maximum health by 20% and reducing damage taken by 20. So it's just a good uh, survivability cooldown there. Now let's talk about Essence Font. So they changed Essence Font in 725 to have a 12 second cooldown. And I really love that because prior to 725, Essence Font didn't have a cooldown. So you didn't know whether to use Vivify or Essence Font. So this goes really well into our AOE healing now. So Essence Font and Vivify are our two AOE heals. Okay, so Essence Font unleashes a rapid twirl of healing bolts at up to six allies within 25 yards every one second for 2.5 seconds. Each bolt heals a target for X amount plus an additional over eight seconds. Gusts of Mist will heal affected targets twice uh, twice castable while moving so you can use this while moving so basically when you are aoe healing what you want to do if especially aoe healing you want to use essence font when the group starts taking damage it'll help buffer the damage that they're taking and just really make the raid not take as much uh scary damage while you're using essence font so here's the trick with essence font and we're going to look at mastery we'll look at we'll look at over here so Mastery, Gusts of Mists. A Fuse, Renewing Mist, Enveloping Mist, and Vivify also cause a Gust of Healing Mist, instantly healing the primary target for X amount. In my case with my Mastery, it's 172k. Okay, so this is, your Mastery is basically a heal. And what that looks like is I'm gonna use a Fuse, which is 186k, okay? So I just healed myself and my Mastery heal actually just crit, so it was 344k. It just crit again, just crit again. And there, it didn't crit. You're getting essentially double the healing with your mastery. So it's really important to use, and you can see how nice it is to have the crit here because it's critting so much. But when you use Essence Font, it can heal your targets with your mastery. Not only is Essence Font healing your AOE targets, but it's healing them twice with your, uh, with your mastery heal. And then while they have that up, while they have that hot from Essence Font, because it doesn't just heal them while you channel, it also heals them over time. So for the next X amount of time, it heals them from Essence Font. Okay, so it becomes a hot, AOE hot. You want to use S uh, Vivify immediately after Essence Font to maximize on the fact that your mastery is benefited from the hot of Essence Font. So what you want to do in an AOE situation is you want to use that while the group is taking damage and then immediately Vivify. 
Vivify the target's taking damage. Now, Vivify causes a surge of invigorating mists around the target, healing them for healing them and two nearest injured allies for 231k. So it's a powerful AoE heal. It doesn't heal as many targets as Essence Font, but when Essence Font is used, you use the channel, and then you have the hot afterward, this is going to get your mastery heal on top of an additional mastery heal from the hot from Essence Font. I'm sorry if this is so confusing, but this is something that's very hard to wrap your mind around about the Mistweaver Monk. And it's very important to remember this. So when you're doing a boss fight in a raid like Tomb of Sargeras, any boss fight really, and the group starts taking AOE damage, the most powerful way, like I said when we were talking about stat priorities, the biggest bang for your buck is going to be using Essence Font while the group is taking damage, immediately followed by targeting and healing the players taking damage with Vivify. Now it's a smart heal, so it'll heal additional targets that are injured nearby them. And that's how you want to use it. That's how you're going to use your mastery to its max, uh, to the max. I'm sorry if that took a long time to explain, but it's very, very important to wrapping your mind around that to understand how to heal effectively as a mist weaver. And then Soothing Mist we talked about, once you use a bunch of your main heals, it just causes you to do this channel heal uh, that won't end until you cancel it or move. And Vivify we talked about, let's see what else is pertinent to healing. We talked about Thunder Focus T, Sheelan's Gift. So this is your artifact ability. So as you heal, and now as a Fuse uh, gives you a stack all the time. So let's just use a Fuse for the sake of explaining Sheelan's Gift. Do I need to target myself? I must need to be in combat to use this. That's okay. So Sheelan's Gift, when you're healing, it's going to generate stacks. And it'll generate up to 12 stacks. Okay? So when you generate up to 12 stacks, it's gonna, each, uh, each cloud is going to heal for 128k. Okay? So 12 times 128k. That's a really strong heal. Not to mention if it crits. Okay? However, with your Whispers of Shahao... Shehao, whatever, however you pronounce it, consuming the mist of Shelem causes each active mist to additionally heal a nearby target for 128k. So not only are you power healing your target, so you could take any target that's almost dead and just top them off easy. If you have this fifth gold trait, what it's going to do is not only give make this an incredibly powerful single target heal, but if you're at anywhere from 10 to 12 stacks, it's also going to become a very effective AoE heal as well. So this is something you can use on cooldown. Sometimes I like to save it a little bit if I know somebody's going to be taking a lot of damage soon or we're going to take a lot of AoE damage soon. It doesn't cost any mana. And if you have 10 to 12 stacks, it's going to be a very nice AoE heal on top of the other AoE heals that you have. So just keep that in mind. If you're getting to the end of a fight, Essence Font's expensive, Vivify is expensive, Sheelan's Gift is free. So keep an eye on that, always use it. If you need to get some big AoE heal or a big single target heal out, it's a very nice artifact ability to have. And uh, then our two healing cooldowns for the Mistweaver is Revival and Life Cocoon. Revival is a massive AoE heal. It looks awesome. It's a massive AoE heal. It's only on a 2.33 minute cooldown. And um, it's it's just a great it's a great spell to use. So what you want to do is when the group is taking massive AoE damage, you pop that bad boy, you have that dope dragon above your head, and your HPS just went through the roof. Very, very simple. And then Life Cocoon encases the target in a cocoon of chi energy for 12 seconds, absorbing 2.1 million damage and increasing all healing over time received by 50%. So when you have that tank on kill Jaden, this is just a great example. When you have that tank on kill Jaden and they just got like smashed by Felclaw and they're about to die, what you want to do is you can do Life Cocoon on them followed by a Thunder Focus and then Enveloping Mist. Because while Life Cocoon is active, they're going to get 50% increased healing from your hot, and then Enveloping Mist is your most effective hot, on top of the fact that you're going to Soothing Mist afterward. So, bam, there you go. You just took them from almost dead to now they have a an Absorb, like a kind of a safety net there before you know to keep them from dying and then your hots there are just going to pick them up so a really good way to use life cocoon for somebody who's about to die is life cocoon thunder focus t instant cast enveloping mist so those are your healing cooldowns your aoe and your single target so that is the spell book it's very important to 
go over that. So thank you for bearing with me. So anyway, guys, when I said we were going to be going over the spell book, we kind of went over the rotation as well. There's no real rotation as the priority list. So just remember to maximize on your mastery as a Mistweaver. And um, just in recap, Thunder Focus T on cooldown, Essence Font while the group is taking AoE damage, followed up by Vivify, uh, a Fuse for single target healing, keep renewing Mist up on as many targets as possible, use it on cooldown. And then you can use Enveloping Mist for big uh, healing over time on, say, the tank or somebody taking specific a lot of damage. And then Revival is your AoE healing cooldown. Life Cocoon is your single target healing cooldown. And Sheelan's Gift is a really good single target heal or AoE heal at 10 to 12 stacks. So just keep that in mind. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it clears some stuff up because it took me quite a while to really understand the Mistweaver Monk. And so I hope that this just cleared things up for you. I have so much fun playing this spec. I just... I just have so much fun doing it. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.